We made it. We made it. <laughs> yes. I had a little browse about what it is that you do. And obviously you are a love and relationship coach. And I know that you have like this fantastic guide on like the eight principles on how to be magnetic to men. So first of all, before we get into all the nitty gritty, tell me about you. So my name is Teal Elizabeth. And um, yeah, I'm originally from a small town in Ojai, California, near Santa Barbara, if anyone knows where that is. So I grew up very sheltered in a very tiny little valley in the mountains. Um, and as I think you were mentioning a little bit, I, uh, I struggled for a long time with relationships and I've always been a very driven, ambitious woman and I could check all the boxes with career and getting a home and getting friends. But when it came to love, it was a really huge void in my life. And it was something that I think our biggest mess is our message is what I've heard many times. And it has been completely my story. And after going through a lot of that heartbreak, I realized I need to figure this out. And I applied that same kind of go-getter mentality to mastering this area of my life. And that's really taken me into this whole journey of building my company, Relax Into Love. Something that you said that really resonated with me is about being an ambitious woman. So do you think that by being very driven and ambitious and uh, say an entrepreneur, for example, where you're so, so busy that you know, you do suffer when it comes to love. Absolutely, absolutely. And what I realized, what I didn't realize for so many years, I was stuck in this pattern. I, I call it the hook and fizzle. Literally, I would lure men in with this allure of being this independent, badass woman. But then something about three months in, I'd realize, oh my God, I think I like this guy, right? Who can relate? <laughs> and then Hi. something within me would switch and... <laughs> something within me would switch and I would turn into this crazy girl, but I didn't realize it. And I would try and shove that crazy girl down and then they would dump me. And that happened for like eight years over and over and over again. And I didn't realize that there was this whole other side to my being that I was really afraid to explore and become. And I was trying to use this ambitious masculine type of energy to get love. And what I realized later is that that wasn't working and it was time to let go of some of those old tendencies that I applied to my relation or to my career and actually move into this more world of feminine energy, which is now what I teach on. You know, I, I think it was Napoleon Hill that said, if you do what you always do, you're going to get what you always get. Right. And it's really interesting that you're saying that because if you're getting the same results, then um, something needs to shift and something needs to change. But how did you take, the change from you know having this entrepreneurial masculine you know ambitious energy to then to to, to what to, to how did you shift that to what yeah well it took a lot of heartbreak <laughs> that's for sure and a lot of quote-unquote failed attempts um to realize that i was just coming up against this wall and i i go into there's lots of ways of how this all shifted the first part it's kind of a crazy story i talk about it a lot but like i I literally met a witch. I was driving on the road and someone like knocked on the window next to me. They're like honking and they're like, roll down your window, roll down your window. And she's like, I need to talk to you. Is there something going on with your love life? And I had just gotten dumped. And I had never met this woman in my life. She stopped me at a, at a stoplight and I'm like, this is strange. So she pulls over, I pull over and she's like, meet me. It's a long story, but she turned out to be a witch. She wanted to do some potions and things, but I, I didn't go forward with all that because it was a little freaky. Did she say but... that you that you were under a curse and therefore you need to give her money? <laughs> I love those ones. But <laughs> it really opened my eyes to realize maybe there's some things within me that I need to shift because obviously people are picking up on it. <laughs> right. And that really kind of spurred this whole world of like diving into myself and doing more of the, the self-love work so that I could make sure that I was breaking through these walls and these barriers that I had around love. I mean, I, I really relate to, to everything that you're saying. Like, for example, myself, I have multiple businesses. You know, I've got Monaco Interiors, I've got Monaco Furniture. I now do business coaching at Self Made Girl Boss. And with me, it's always been about business and growth and prosperity and, you know, getting that money. And my love life, however, has always struggled so I'm 36 and I'm not married I have no children and it doesn't seem like 
that is in the horizon anytime soon. And what you were saying about, you know, approaching like men and, you know, they see, first of all, they see me and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, she's so tenacious and strong and powerful and they're extremely attracted to that. But then what happens is that, you know, it's like, well, we'll know your place because now you're becoming a little bit far too boisterous, far too masculine and you can't tell me what it is that I have to do. And I guess that's the psychoness, you know, that comes out of us. And then it becomes a tug of war. And then they're like, actually, no, I don't want this because men want a peaceful life and they're quite logical and it's very kind of black and white. And they don't want to start talking about things over and over and over again like a woman would. So then they would be like, sorry, but goodbye. And you'd be like, but why? I don't understand everything was going so well. That's the similar? Oh, 100%, that's completely true. And, and that's kind of what really sparked me into stepping into building Relax Into Love as a, as a company and as a brand, because I've really recognized that there is this huge shift in the way that women are showing up in the workplace and in the world today, where we have this amazing surge of women's empowerment and just really taking a stance for really showing up to be just as men. We can do it. We can have everything that men can have. But the problem is, is that's having a huge backlash in relationships. And that energy and that go-getter mentality, we are coming into relationships with that very mind-driven, like strategic planning, controlling kind of energy, and we're butting heads with men. And men are starting to say, I don't even know what to do with you anymore. You look like a woman, but you're acting like a man or your energy is like a man. So where do I fit into this whole relationship? And this is about redefining what it means to be a woman in the modern day where we're not 1950s housewives anymore, just like catering to men. And we're not completely shifted to this other extreme where men don't want to have anything to do with us, where we get to really come into this nice center point and take the best of both worlds, that beautiful feminine energy and that powerful energy of running empires and be able to come into partnership in what I call a spiritual evolved partnership where men and women get to come together and be able to build something beautiful and evolving that grows together and gets to bloom together. So, so for those powerful women that are watching this, they're like, well, you know, it's kind of easier said than done. How do I, I mean, I don't even know what it is that I'm doing wrong. Uh, how, how, how do I embrace my femininity? What does that mean that when they say something, I have to be quiet? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I think femininity as a whole has gotten a bad, bad connotation of what it actually means to be feminine. When I first thought about femininity, I didn't want anything to do with it. I was like, I want to be strong, I want to be independent, I want to be powerful, I don't want to be needy or weak or emotional, right? These are kind of some of those connotations. But true femininity is not that. that that's what I more consider toxic femininity, just like there's toxic masculinity. True femininity is about understanding your value, understanding your worth, knowing your strength on the inside, and allowing yourself to still be soft on the outside. Because a lot of times what I see is that many strong women, we hold our strength on the outside and we try and show and prove to the world that we're strong and we almost have it come out like spikes that are like defenses, being like, look at me, I'm strong, don't mess with me, right? But when men get into that, they're like, well, I don't know how to get close to you, right? But if we can learn how to invert that strength and hold it on our inside and allow ourselves to feel comfortable to be that soft, gentle, nurturing, loving, open, radiant goddess, queen, right? Then we get to have both. And this is exactly what I coach women on and support and help them with is learning how to invert that strength and become soft on the in soft on the outside, strong on the inside. Everything always kind of like falls down to the same thing, regardless if it's business or, you know, a, a relationship or love. And that is that you have to invest in yourself in order for you to be able to grow that confidence and understand the strength of your core so that your integrity and who you are is solid. And you know that you don't have to be aggressive and give out this aggressive energy because at the end of the day, you know your boundaries and you know ultimately what you aren't going to be willing to accept and you know what you are and what, and what, what you know will be a maybe um and I, I think you're right i think once you really know yourself at the end of the day i don't you know I, I, i'm not going to die if he leaves me i'm not going to die without him like my life does still continue like my mother didn't give birth to me so that i would die over a man right so if i can understand that i am my own person 
and that I should love my qualities and that another man that comes into my life should also love my qualities and, and you know, uh, add to, to, to my life, right? And, and know that I don't need to be aggressive in order to keep him because that in turn, I guess persistence is resistance, right? The more you persist at something, the more something resists. Yeah, absolutely. I love everything you're saying. I know the answers. I know the answers. (laughs) You know all the answers, but it is. It's so hard to do. It's so hard to do. But I want to honor you in just the awareness. And awareness is 90% of it. And that's why I love that you're opening up these channels to have these dialogues. Because when we can just start to recognize how we are showing up and take responsibility for how we're showing up in relationships, that's when we can start to choose to make different choices and show up in different ways. So for me, like a tangible example was... In the past, I would be, I was working in San Francisco at Uber on the people development team. And I was just, they worked me to the max, right? I had long days, I had deadlines, I had just so much pressure. And I was dating and I remember being so much in my mind trying to, you know, finish deadlines, blah, blah, blah. And then I'd rush to go to my date, right? And I'd go to my date and he would ask me, oh, how are you? And immediately I'd rattle off from my brain, like, oh, I had this deadline and then this homeless person spat on my shoe and then the subway was late, (laughs) blah, 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 whatever, right? And uh, that is not a way of coming into the conversation from a feminine place. That's very much a masculine type of conversation where you're engaging in a mental conversation versus just this tiny little shift of starting to recognize feminine energy of, calming coming out of our head and into our heart just taking a second to disengage from the go 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 do 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 and get back into the present of being and connecting back into your heart space i was able to on future dates have those same crazy days have the homeless person spit on my shoe come into the date and take a breath and he asked me how i'm how my day was and i would say it feels so good to be here right I felt a little overwhelmed at work today, but you know, overall, I'm feeling really just excited to be able to continue to grow and develop as a person, right? It's just a total shift in energy. And it shifts him from receiving you from a place of in your brain to a place of in your heart. And when you show up in your heart, you're opening up that space for him to also be in his heart. And that's what creates intimacy and love. We are victims of our own habits and we, have to shift those habits of wanting to complain and be like, you know, you really have to take control of yourself and be like, right, okay, behave. You know, there's a certain (laughs) time to act in certain places with certain people. Like you wouldn't do that with a top client. You know, you know how to act then, you know, you wouldn't be like being like all miserable and negative because obviously that client's going to repel what you've got to say and then ultimately you're not going to get the deal so I guess I'm I'm thinking about this from a business perspective and trying to translate it in the language of love but in a way there is a similarity there it's just getting out of your head and into your heart and getting out of the thinking about the future and back into the present moment of who you are in that moment with the person right in front of you and allowing that to be the place for the relationship to grow is that for anyone that's um, watching I know that on your website, you do have this fabulous free guide and it's got a very catching title and that is like the eight principles of how to be magnetic, you know, towards man. So yeah, absolutely. I love that you're sharing this. Um, To me, being feminine is about being magnetic. And this is not just to men. This is truly to everything in your life. And I've shifted this even in my business and the way I approach business. It's a very leaning back kind of energy. So It's very counterintuitive to the way we've been taught, as Sheryl Sandberg says, to lean forward, lean in, do, do, go, go. This is about truly leaning back, opening up your heart and allowing energy, allowing opportunities, allowing men to pursue you instead of you pursuing them. And so it's, it's just um, these guide, this guide is uh, talking through these principles of how to really shift your mindset into a place of getting into that leaned back energy so that you can allow more to come into you. And from that place, I'll tell you, it's a lot more easy and relaxing, right? Which is why I call my company Relax Into Love, is that relationships really don't have to be hard. When we approach it from the right perspective and we know the tools, we can actually start to just lean back into love and let it come to us. And as long as we're staying grounded and true in who we are and what our boundaries are, what our values and needs are, we get to be more of the 
uh, deciding the, the deciders of who comes to us versus us trying to fit our lives into their lives and into them. And I think that's something that I see and feel and hear a lot from women is that they are so wanting to have that man, have that relationship, have that status, right? That they will do anything they can to make that happen. And they will end up sacrificing parts of themselves or they will end up just letting go of the things that they really want and the direction of the life that they want so that they can fit into their man's life. And what I'm talking about is learning how to lean back so that you can start attracting the right kind of men who fit into your life and fit into your vision and magnetize that into your life. That is so powerful. You know, I always hear people saying, well, how are you going to attract a man you know, what you want, if you don't even know what you want. Do you think that's true? Do you think that you should be saying, right, I want this, 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 without it being too much of a list where now you become picky? Like, do you need to look for fundamentals? Oh, that's such a great question. This is yes and no. It's, it's once again, it's the masculine and feminine shift. So a masculine approach to having, I, absolutely you need to have your goals and uh, what you want in a, in a partner. But it's not so much about on paper what those qualities are. It's much more about how you want to feel in the relationship. And this is one of the first things that I take my clients through is getting really crystal clear on that vision of how they want to feel in the relationship. Because that is very different from trying to fit uh, a man into certain boxes of financially free and, and confident and funny and blah, blah, blah. It's more about, I want to feel in a relationship where I am adored, where I am cherished, where my man makes me a priority, right? And when we can start to connect into that feeling, we know really quickly if a man matches that feeling or not. You can tell instantly if a man's gonna fit into that vision, whereas it's harder to kind of fit them into the other box of all of the external qualities. And those external qualities can change over time. But the way that a man makes you feel usually doesn't change. Well, they have to be like this, 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 this. So hold on a second, now I'm confused. Does he fit all this? I mean, he fits, he fits four, but what about the, and then you do become flustered and then you all of a sudden get the list and you put it in the back burner and then all of a sudden you forgot, you know, you, you've put to one side the wants that you actually need and you've compromised just to be with this person, which isn't obviously the idea. So you're saying is to attach it to, how is he making you feel? Like how, you know, in a dream world, what is it that you want? How, what can you see? How can you feel it? That's the feeling that you want, right? 100%. And that really taps into, I'm very spiritual and all about the law of attraction as well, right? So this is about really calling in and magnetizing that law of attraction kind of energy of feeling into your future. I know that on your website, it said that you did eventually find the man who absolutely adores you, right? Yes, and now engaged, yeah. Oh my gosh, congratulations, how amazing. When, how, were you ready? Were you looking, did it just happen? Well, it first started with me realizing I needed to make a change, so I hired a relationship coach. And this was something that, you know, I think there can be some stigma around hiring relationship coaches for some reason. I know in my mind, I was like, I don't wanna hire a relationship coach, that means I'm weak, that means I, can't manage relationships, how sad is that, right? But it's not sad. It's the same idea as if you want to lose weight, you go and hire a coach. If you want a business, a PT, yeah. hire a business coach, it's the same kind of idea. And so I finally got over that and I recognized I need help. And I hired a relationship coach and she was able to help me really see the parts of myself that I couldn't see and see the ways that I was showing up in relationships that I needed to be able to shift into and shift out of. And from that place, I did. I, a man that had been, he put me in the friend zone for years. We worked together. Within weeks, he asked me out and we started dating for over a year. And it was incredible. And it was unlike anything I'd ever had before. I'd never had a year long relationship up until that point. But even in that place where I was so deeply invested in him, he still wasn't giving me everything I wanted. And it was really frustrating because I was feeling like, what do I do? Do I settle? Do I sacrifice myself? Because I've never had anything as good as this, but I know I deserve more. And I ended up actually in the same breath telling him, I love you and I'm breaking up with you because I deserve more. And that was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. And I painted the vision of what I knew I was looking for and the way I wanted to feel and all the things that I talk about and teach now. And he honored that, he respected that. It was really painful and hard. But two months later, 
he came back to me and he says, okay, I want to be that man for you. And I was already dating someone new at the time. I was like, I'm moving on. You aren't going to give me what I want. Like, I'm moving on. And he came back and he, he says, I want to be with you for the rest of my life. And that was six years ago. And we've been truly in an effortless, beautiful relationship ever since. Wow. And you know what? And I, and I see this time and time again of women that have just, you know, got married or when they tell back their story. And they all have a very similar story. And that is that, you know, they had to set the boundary and say, you know, I really love you, but I love me more. And this is what I want. And if you love me, then you're going to be, you're going to help me to feel and be protected in this way. If not, then unfortunately, I wish you all the best, but I'm going to have to go. But you can't do that as a weapon to try and force right. that to happen. It's got to be genuine. 100%. I was going to say the same thing. This is not a malicious thing. This was not a, well, screw you. I deserve better. This was with so much love in my heart and recognizing maybe he just can't be that man for me. Maybe that's too much to ask. And I would hate to put that pressure on him just with anyone, you know, you don't want to push anyone into something that they're not ready or able to give to you. So by taking that self-respect and that, that distance, he was able to really come to terms with himself and recognize, is this something I'm able to give her? And do I really want this? And is she worth it for me in my life? And it worked out that it was. But the beautiful thing was, is that even if it wasn't, I felt so confident in who I was and what I wanted. And I knew that the next man that came into my life would be probably that, right? It's, it's not one and done. It's just an opportunity to keep growing and up-leveling yourself. And then in return, you up-level the people that are in your life around you. I love it. So for, for anyone that's watching, how do they connect with you? Like, what, what are, how, what, how do your services work? Yeah, absolutely. So I have a lot of variety of things. I have an amazing book that's called The Modern Goddess, um, Redefining Femininity for the Modern Woman. So you can get that on my website. I have an incredible podcast, which, oh, I love that podcast. It's just my free outlet to just share all my, all my realizations and reflections on the daily. Um, I also have an incredible course and group programs and one-on-one -on -one coaching for women that are really ready to do the deeper work on themselves. Amazing. Okay. And so I'm coming to my last question. It's a question I ask everyone, right? And that is, you know, if you had, you know, a magic wand that could change one thing and one thing only in the world, what would that be and why? It would be helping people to connect back to the truth within them and the light within them. Because I think a lot of people are disconnected from their truth and disconnected from their light and they look externally to find that validation or find that sense of peace or relief, and it can drive us crazy. And really the only place we can get that peace and that true unconditional love is within ourselves. Absolutely love and that. So that's what I'm aiming to do with the world, one person at a time. <laughs> one person at a time, exactly. Just one person at a time. And, and, and you know what, I always say, even if you can just make one person happy, that's enough for me, you know? Uh, what an achievement but I just want to say Till thank you so much for your time it's been a pleasure meeting you and getting such wonderful insights I can definitely say hands down you have motivated me so much and put so many things that had question marks into perspective so I thank you for that thank you I so appreciate that and yeah I'm happy to share this amazing guide with all of your followers and please follow my podcast you can search relax into love um it's a fabulous free podcast with just more of my insights so amazing well thank you so much and take care of yourself and congratulations again thank you all right bye take care bye-bye <laughs>